scanner. Um, we scan them in quadrants, like we had some prophetic charts. They weren't prophetic charts, some old ones. They were some kind of a pro uh, evangelistic series of canvas charts. What we did was we scanned them in quadrants, and then we used Photoshop to stitch them together. And we're, we're actually pretty pleased with the results of that because there was no other way we could have done it. We, we have um, done, we bring, brought in photography equipment and laid, like for the prophetic charts, they're very fragile and, and I wouldn't try to scan them. So we laid them flat on the, on the ground and then they took pictures from above. And I believe there's a lab at Andrews yeah. that also has a large scale um, uh, camera. Yeah, that, that was done at the lab. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the stitching actually, the, the, the stitching option in Photoshop is actually pretty amazing. It'll do some things that I couldn't believe, so. This is just to follow on to something uh, that Jim said about the, the skinning of it, um, of, of the, uh, the platform. So not talking about the database now, but the way it looks. Um, and there's a, a significant point to be made here, which we haven't, there's a, there's a whole range of other, there's a whole range of things that haven't been covered as yet, I guess, um, which is that the, the intent is uh, that the E.G. White Writings website and the Adventist Archives documents archives site will still be accessible under those URLs. Uh, the reason for this is that there are sensitivities over the types of material that are presented. It's part of CAR's uh, assigned task to collect everything, uh, including Camrite, uh, including, um, what was the scandalous newsletter in the early 80s, Adventist Currents, maybe? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, to, 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 to have all these things. But if you go to the E.G. White Writings website, it would be troubling, to say the least, to some Adventists to discover Camerites materials there attacking Ellen White. Uh, and if you were to go to the GC's website and find things, it would also it would certainly be troubling to people who work in this building and maybe to church members as well. So our concept is to have everything on one platform, but have certain things that can be accessed still through... Uh, a separate URL. And so if you go to E.G. White Writings, you would be accessing the ADL, but you would only be getting the things that belong, as it were, to the LNG White Estate. If you went to the archives document site, uh, again, you'd actually be going to the Adventist Digital Library, but you'd only be accessing the official things which we uh, is, is our task to, to publish. If you went to, and hopefully you know, this car will have its own separate site that one could go to, and likewise if we were to start adding materials, if we were to add things from Loma Linda, if we were to add things from UNASPE, the Adventist University in Brazil that has a significant body of digitized material, if Friedenzau were to start or Avondale were to start digitizing, it would be possible for you too just to have your own separate uh, way of accessing that would only bring up the things that were you're in your particular collections, but at the same time it would be possible to go to, just for somebody to go to AdventistDigitalLibrary.org or whatever the URL is and have absolutely everything. Uh, but it, for, for various reasons for the stakeholders it's important that some of those uh, sites continue to exist and I think if you're wanting to add material to the ADL you might like people to be able to say, okay, this is just what's in Loma Linda, this is just what's in PUC, this is just what's in Friedensau or Colange, uh, so that people have a, have a sense of what's in your collection as, as well as to the, the greater whole. So this can be achieved by the, the skinning, and that's, it, it was Jim's use of that term that prompted this observation, but just so that you have a, an idea of, of how this is going to work. Hi, um, just a couple of questions, and I don't know who wants to answer. Um, from what I understand, ADL is supposed to be a global resource, so I'm wondering if you will actively pursue contributions from other parts of the world um, before you put the resource out there. And I'm wondering if you're developing some sort of translation tool, because not everybody understands, speaks English, reads in English, if there's going to be 
a way that you can, say, translate to Spanish or translate to German or whatever language? I'll just answer on the on the first point. Uh, yes, we are we're actively working with uh, certainly some universities and indeed collections of historic materials that are outside universities and colleges uh, in South America and in Africa um, and in Europe. Uh, so we would like indeed to to make it global. Um, and the idea, you know, ideally we would keep adding to this. Uh, on the issue of translation, um, I think Merlin was going to say something. That, that wasn't what I was going to talk about. I was going to say as far as sequencing, um, we initially wanted to work with a few institutions and get, get it right, get it settled, get it working well before we try to start pulling in all the others. So I don't think by next June it, we, we will not be ready to be pulling in these right. other institutions. This is a long-term goal. <laughs> but as we continue into the future, it is definitely a part of the plan. It, it needs to be an Adventist Digital Library. Okay, so just so I understand what you're saying, when it comes out in June, it will only be available in English and with North American resources, is that right? There might be some non-English materials. Okay. Because we, at Andrews at least, we collect a lot of non-English materials and what might have been digitized could be there. And yeah. also it will include the E.G. White writings which at the moment in increasingly covers things in a, in a whole multitude of languages. Right. So it's certainly, as of next June, it certainly won't only be in English. And as far as the translation, I don't, that is a goal. But at this point, we don't have that yet. I, I wonder, I think Carlene had, did you have your mic on, Carlene? I don't think by June it will be all of North America. Either. No, no, I, I wasn't it saying that. Only, no, I just wanted to make sure she yeah. understood that. I, think I, just, I understand that. Countries. My issue yeah. is having a framework that involves more countries than just two. No, as I, we have, we have, I have had quite active discussions with UNESPE and the division in South America about bringing in Portuguese and Spanish materials of which they have a very considerable body already digitized, not necessarily in the format or specifications that would need, but, but probably could be adapted relatively easily. So that would be uh, the, the question. There, there, are, there are questions that that throws up which would need to be worked through and, and probably couldn't by next June, but those that would be one of South American institutions would hopefully be what some of the first uh, people to come on board once the platform goes live and then starts to expand. In terms of N2, I think we're talking about the actual items, but the text that we've written to supplement the items, I believe, is something that you're asking too. Will it be able, you be able to read the accompanying text for each of the, like if we have a collection, can you, can you read it in Spanish? And, and it's a great, I, you know, I wrote it down. So it is something that needs to be done. That's something we have to look at with the platform. You know, there's Google Translate. There's a lot of things out there that help translate. So that's something we would definitely incorporate into it. I was just telling Julie that Drupal does have its management system, the ability to handle multiple languages. That was one of the reasons that we chose that platform. Uh, of course, it helps in the translation of it, but that still has to be done for Google Translate. I've got two questions. Um, the first one about copyright. Copyright varies vastly between country to country. Uh, so where do we go by the country that's depositing the material with you or do we go by the by US copyright? I believe we have to go by the, co the country's laws of where it was published. That's my understanding. No? So I can scan something in America and put it online? No, you can't, but they could. According to the... Push it once and leave. According to the Burn Copyright Convention, the copyright that applies is the country in which it's used. So conceivably, it could be illegal for you to copy and use something here, but not in another country, or vice versa. 
I, I checked this out when I was doing uh, the copyright policy in Canada. Mm -hmm. And do I need to follow U.S. laws or Canadian laws? Right. And I follow Canadian okay. laws. Yeah, we'll have to definitely look into that more. Because I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if, we're, we're, if our website is going across the world. We're not just not not just having a website in the United States. That's this, gonna be Yeah, this is uh, when I was saying that there are issues about taking materials in from other countries, these are some of them and it's necessary to move with a certain degree of caution. Um, and at the moment, I mean what we could digitize